a friend of mine is moving and she can't take everything she has with her. She's mm -hmm. giving me an antique drafting table. Wow. That's awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Now I just got to figure out where to put it. <laughs> well, you've had that problem. <laughs> yeah, hey, good morning, Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Spirit. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Yeah, it's, I came uh, in on everybody saying "Wow." What's what's what's? Uh, uh, I want to know. A friend of mine just gifted me an antique drafting table. What? Yeah. Wow. Nice. <laughs> so like, I know you collect antiques, and I know you're an artist, so it's perfect for you. Nobody else would get it but you. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm so, I'll get rid of my bag. I don't care. I will find room for it. Wow, that's really nice. What <laughs> where what year is it from? I got your copy of that there. Um from the 20s. Ooh, With that means it's gonna last forever. Errors. Say that again. It's one of my favorite eras for art and architecture. Mm, art nouveau. Yes. Bad. I'm gonna let me do the announcements, everybody. And so if you wanna, you know, if you wanna follow along, uh, you know, start getting warmed up or whatever, that's cool. Uh, but good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to Guy Atchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live streams and real-world events. Uh, our goal and mission is to ultimately inspire and create better art and tattoos together. We beam out nearly every single day, uh, and with uh, your help, we become a uh, a quality network of on-demand and uh, recorded art shows. Um, so you can find uh, Reinventing the Tattoo on all the app stores, Apple App Store, Google Play, um, as well as our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Roku channel. Um, uh, we have a number of uh, weekly staple shows. Um, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have the Skill Building Sunday with Jason Leeser. On Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, we have Drawing for Tattooers with James Wisdom. That's me. And then, of course, the gang, right? Amber, Harriet, and Spirit. Um, on, uh, at, at 5 p.m. Eastern, we have, um, uh, let's talk about feelings uh, with Robbie Ripple. Uh, at 9 p.m., we have the exclusive drawing groups led by Guy Atchison and Sandy McAndrew. Um, Tuesdays at 10 a.m., we have the Tuesday Fields Drawing Group with the Cardo Sturt event. And on Wednesdays at 1 p.m., we have the Tattoo Now uh, uh, show. It's the business show about tattoos. Thursday at 6 p.m., we have the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast hosted by Fawn Baker. Right. So all of these shows are. Um, high quality content they're meant for you to to put on and and get work done right we're all doing work and so we want you to be productive as well um and that's what these shows are kind of you know that's what they're all about so um i'm gonna sh see if i can share my screen yeah i think i can mm, right Cool. So, this is uh, reinventingthetattoo.com, uh, and so um, if you come and check it out, there is uh, this landing page where you can um, find the content. You can uh, also find um, uh, various like professional development and also um, skill training. There's all kinds of free content here for you. Um, oh yeah, the tale of two tattooers. Uh, that was uh, Gabe Ripley's uh, uh, program last night. It was really great. So yes, it was. Um, yeah, if you got a chance to check it out, um, if, you know I may even go back through and watch it again because there's a lot in there, right? So um, but I again, was trying yeah. to take notes, but I've got to go watch it again and take more notes. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, I thought it was really full of uh, 
of uh, you know just just great examples and stuff. So um, anyway, Gabe is great. Uh, yeah, this is usually where we have our uh, broadcast information, but um, but there's the event schedule, right? So if you want to zoom in to one of these live events um, or find out what's happening, uh, it's here on reinventingthetattoo.com. Um, here's where you can uh, ask Guy for a free consult. So worth it. Um, but we'd like to take a minute and uh, thank our sponsors, right? Uh, Tattoo Now. Let me see. Got some stuff written about them. Yeah. Tattoo Now, Technologies for Tattooers. It's the leading edge of professional development management and digital tools for tattoo artists of all levels. They have upgrades, mailing lists, as well as CRM software and professional development tools. So check out TattooNow.com. Um, and then, of course, uh, we want to thank Guy Atchison for being the founder and uh, inspiration behind Reinventing the Tattoo. You can learn more about Guy Atchison at GuyAtchison.com, where you, you can, of course, pick up uh, the Biomech Encyclopedia. Uh, it's, very in, it's a very in-depth look at the culture and uh, aesthetic of biomechanical tattooing. So um, if, if it, that's an interest for you, it's, it's well worth it. And uh, of course, at guyinstein.com, you can find prints, original artwork, uh, machines, um, as well as uh, as well as his other, as, as his other educational products. So thank you, Guy Atchison. Um, right. Remember, you can always find the latest and greatest uh, at the reinventingthetattoo.com uh, website. And uh, so right now, we're broadcasting on Reinventing the Tattoo Network. And so I'm done sharing. Yeah. Thanks, gang. How's it going? <laughs> Happy hey, Monday. Happy, Happy Monday. Monday. There was this old movie where, you know, where they said, um, you know, what was that line? It's like, somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's about, right? I'm, I'm always, I always love Mondays, so. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's great. Um, it's great to see you all. Um, I, I'll start. I definitely had like a, a hectic week. I don't know if I got a, that much done. <laughs> it certainly felt very hectic. Like, you know, the, the end of the year is approaching holiday season and all that stuff. You know, I think all those things, they, they weigh on us, um, you know, yeah. and, uh, and of course, like, you know, I think it varies from shop to shop, artist to artist, like how busy you are during this season. Um, but it doesn't matter, like even if you have everything, you know, per perfectly planned, right? There's always, there's always contingency, there's always fluctuations, stuff happens, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, for everybody, I think it's a, it's a, it's a stressful time of the year. And so that's why I think I um, found a lot of enjoyment and a lot of sort of uh, um, uh, sort of renewal, right? Like getting back and doing drawings and stuff, and and then also thinking about um, I don't know, thinking about about the drawing groups, right? Thinking about like being with my community and and just doing like uh, doing this very like uh, consistent thing that's going on. So, but yeah. So how how was uh, how was everybody else's week? Um, we had a good week. We're uh, contemplating a move to Georgia and uh, looks like that's going to happen with the looking at homes. And I've kind of been thinking, I want a place that I'm going to have a garden, but um, also a room, a loft studio kind of thing, which I've, I am really enjoying the drawing and Me too. Uh, yeah so it's like okay do i want to be in the woods area a woody area where i can just look out at nature or do i want to be down by a lake where i can have a loft with windows that will look out onto the water and the people in the water and the birds and the... so working through that and uh that's that's why i'm going to have to decide i've never really Needed to have one of those before. 
I had that even be part of my thought process. Where do I want to be and where do I want to draw and create? Create. I think wherever you do you end up though, you you know, that's the spirit, right? You're gonna end up sort of uh, like uh, finding the beauty in the place. You know what I mean? And that's what that's what artists do. You know, I think that's so that's awesome. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're thinking about it. And I'm glad that it's like, you know, I think that's going to be the that's going to be the answer probably doesn't matter where you end up, you'll just, you know, sort of love it like, um, you know, I, I ended up in the city and, uh, you know, through my window, I can see the skyline. It's like, you know, it's, like, it's, it's far away. And there's like between some, you know, between some telephone lines and stuff. <laughs> but it's awesome. You know what I mean? It's like, I can, I can just make it out. It's back there. And so, uh, again, you know, I love to open up the window and, you know, just okay. see um, there's a tree there too. <laughs> From my window, yeah. I have a beautiful view of the McDonald's sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But in my backyard, it's, my backyard is covered in this giant old sycamore tree. Ooh. And the real, the far backyard is just covered in wisteria vines. It's a canopy of them. Ooh. So oh, it's wow. really good back there. And if I can ignore the traffic, it's, it's a very good nature setting. And some ear pods or listen to some calming music or. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Sit there and soak it in. I had a real good time with my, um, <clears throat> ellipses this this morning I, fun. I put them into everything i put them in triangles and circles some of them i just kept doing i didn't even lift my pencil from the paper that just did one ellipse into another ellipse into another ellipse awesome like that. oh, that's nice it was fun that was a real fun and then this is what i worked on oh. this week. what <laughs> wow. look at that that's great yeah wow that looks great well thank you that's from the book. Mm -hmm. Super. Oh, well, that's super duper awesome. Oh, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I couldn't do it in 10 minutes. It's a lot fun. No, no. It's like, it's a challenge. I've, I've also been, you know, sort of going back and like, you know, I'm, I'm doing the, you know, uh, gesture sketches. Mm -hmm. But then I'm also going to the book. So there's this sort of... Um, push and pull right mm -hmm. but um but amber i was going to ask like so do you ever go back there to your backyard do you ever draw that tree that you were talking about yes actually i've painted it a couple times in very loose watercolor mm. you know more impressionistically but i want to paint it i'm i'm working on being able to paint, paint watercolor more realistically wow. so that's going to be a goal awesome yeah, that'll yeah. probably be i'll go out there in the spring because this morning it was offensively cold uh, offensively cold i looked at the, <laughs> i looked at the temperature and it said 17 and i was like don't you talk Ooh, to me like that. that's just disrespectful exactly. yeah it's offensive it's to that <laughs> spirit how about you, you? what's been what's new with you Oh, that's so funny, Amber. <laughs> um, I have, what have I been up to? I have been doing a lot of shadow work lately uh, and just working on the parts of me that I'm most afraid of, most ashamed of, and, you know, just really trying not to let that voice be the loudest voice in my head. Um, you know, and I find that this is kind of work that I often do during the, um, slow season, you know, uh, because it's cold, the sun is not out as much, there's seasonal depression to worry about, you know, there's just not as much tattoos to do necessarily. Um, and so I've really, really kind of been pouring a lot of my, you know, a lot of that energy into drawing, just, you know, just trying to draw every day, just trying to sit down and, you know, like just draw these, I'm on, I'm on hands right now in the book. And I'm just kind of trying to just get as much of that work done as possible. And it's been, it's been very satisfying to say the very least. Um, drawing you know, is a great to, way to work out your emotions. Yes, yes. I mean, I, it's, it's almost like Amber, like everywhere else in the world, I, you know, is imperfect, except when I can sit down and draw. That's where I'm a master. That's where everything is beautiful and everything is wonderful. But outside of that is, 
you know, you gotta, you gotta do some inner, inner soul searching. Um, but yeah, yeah. Other than that, I've been good. I've just been still getting settled into my new house with my family and all that good stuff. And, um, yeah, just been, um, you know, taking it one day at a time. I finished that watercolor I was working on last week. Mm. See it. Oh, wow. that's real, oh, that's really nice. With the color. It's definitely a tattoo concept. Mm. It's like, uh, you know, like uh, the tetragrammaton with the eye, you know, the all seeing eye in the mm -hmm. middle and stuff. You know, it's very, um, there's a lot of like sort of mystical. Yes, it's the element it, of you know? earth, air, mm -hmm. fire, water, and spirit in the center. Mm -hmm. So you going to leave white space around it or, or do you think you still want to put a little something in the um, corner? I think if, it, if I wind up rendering it as a tattoo, I'll add more, like maybe some more filigree on the outside to create a frame. Because if it winds up being a back piece, it really does need more in order to fill the back. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is like... Um, it's so it's so interesting, right? If you you know you start working on a back piece, it's like it just get it feels like it's it bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, as you go. it could be a it can be a really really big project for sure. So, um, um, yeah. So so excellent planning, I think, can be your friend there. You know, when you start working on like yeah. really large and you know, in depth <laughs> sorts of pieces like that, it can you know planning it out, thinking about like. You know, using all of your experience to your advantage. I think that's the, you know, just like, just like you said, you know, you, you're going to want um, certain things to happen with it if you go yes. back weeks with it. So I think that's, that's very wise. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, well, uh, so, um, oh, I, I have a book I wanted to, to share with you all. Uh, it's called uh, The Figurative Artist. Wait, wait oh, where, where can I hold it? <laughs> I'm like, everything's back. The Figurative Artist's Handbook um, uh, by uh, Robert Zeller. And so um, there's a lot of old books about figure drawing, you know, like, and, and a lot, and I reference them, you know, the one we're drawing from, uh, the George Bridgman Constructive Anatomy book is like, uh, it's, it's old, it's in the public domain. Um, and then I reference Andrew Loomis quite a bit. Uh, again, it's, you know, um, it's a fair, they're fairly dated references. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, you know, I, I was um, looking and looking around for contemporary, you know, figurative artists sort of drawing book. And this drawing book, you know, it really does reference those, you know, those artists I mentioned. It, it actually, you know, directly references those two specifically. Um, but with, you know, with a lot of, uh, with a lot of really good, you know, drawing books, um, there's a wonderful, uh, there's a wonderful sort of introduction and then sort of like, you know, art history, where it goes through the different sorts of like uh, periods of, um, periods of art. Uh, yeah, so the ancient Greek and then um, Gothic art. Sometimes it can be, <laughs> sometimes it can be challenging. Look at the, look at the emotion. I don't know if I can show it. Can you see? Yes. Adam That's being being cast out of the garden. Like, look at the emotion there. They're so full of shame, right? They're just, they're ashamed. It's- Is that on the Sistine Chapel? Oh. What's that? Is that, on the, is that Michelangelo Sistine Chapel? No, this is uh, Macasio. Macasio. Oh, got it. And I think, but it is, it's in Florence. So, mm -hmm. um, oh. Yeah, definitely. I think he was, before, he was before Michelangelo. I think Masaccio. so. No, I think that's true. Um, oh, that's he invent wow, here's blue? Some Michelangelo for, for us, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, just, just sort of like, you know, kind of doing what we're doing yeah you know, like, you know what i mean yeah. studying anatomy and muscles and value um mm -hmm. but the study 
you know, the study, the constant sort of study of it. Um, I've heard, uh, I've heard criticisms that like, you know, so if you look at a female figures that Michelangelo drew, it really just looks like a man and he put, he puts like weird breasts on them. <laughs> so, he never, I don't think he really ever drew female, actual, you know, actual women. So it's kind of, there's this strange, you know, there's this strange sort of phenomenon there, but it's, you know, that's what he liked. He was the artist. He got to sit. Even the masters weren't good at everything. Right. No, you can't, you can't be a master of all, right? It's, you know, it's what you, here's your domain. You know, Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know. I'm just sort of, st we're stuck here in the past, but there's like, um, what, what book okay, is this? Leonardo this is, da Vinci the, this is the figurative artist handbook. Oh, that's the figurative well, artist. The beginning of it starts off with all of these, you know, with all these art historical movements. Um, Here's a Rubens, right? You know, we're talking about like uh, the Baroque period. Rococo is next, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, realism. Uh, I think we a lot of times um, we can use these terms almost interchangeably, but they are really specific. If that makes sense, right? If you're talking about a, you know particular art historical time period or movement. Um, and so having a little insight and then like seeing the dates and stuff when you go to the museum or whatever, or you start to think about the things that you like, um, you might be able to find more of it. Um, but I'll jump ahead. How about Egon Shally? Does, does anybody know? Yeah. So uh, there's Clint. Mm. And then Egon Shally is, is, the, is the one next to just a, you know, just like a, this is, beautiful figurative stuff but it's very kind of felt and like uh you know it's like stylized in these really interesting ways almost uh um you know there's a, there's a there's a sort of a uncanny kind of a quality to it that's very very beautiful but then you know um oh, norman rockwell mm. rockwell's paintings are so iconic and you know yeah. um, and and he really did. He really did work very hard on on his pieces. And it was kind of this. It was kind of this time period. I mean, there was photography. You know what I mean? It wasn't like there was. You know, it's like this is the time before photos or whatever. Like that's not yeah. true. You know, he was painting these covers. You know, for like Saturday Evening Post or these other illustrations. I think I don't know. Almost trying. You know, like to outdo the camera, if you if you will, right? Odd mm. Nerdrum. Uh, Nerdrum over here, the the resurrection, wherever I'm at, right there. If you're not familiar with Odd Nerdrum, wow. he's a painter. Up oh, here, I'll hold it up again. So incredible. If you're not familiar with Odd Nerdrum, he's a he's still alive, mm. and he's a painter uh, that does these like mm, they're almost. Uh, they're a reference to like the the history paintings of the early modern period they're, they're very beautiful and they're they're very like um uh, uh i don't know they're anyway you gotta check them out they're great great big oil paintings they're, they're amazing um so the book really kind of the author goes through um drawing a drawing a figure and takes us through all of these different like methods and all these different sorts of ways of, of drawing the figure. And so um, I like this book a lot. Uh, I don't think I'm, I don't know like how much more of it I can really sort of show. It's not really advertisement for it, more, more as like um, just recommending a book that, um, that I found to be uh, really good quality, just a lot of information. And, um, you know, there's, I mean, there's others too, of course, but this one, this one I found a, a couple years ago and, um, you know, I really, really enjoyed it. It's like, it has a lot, it has a lot to offer. So, um, but also I wanted to mention that, uh, I, I looked up, um, the war of art. Thank you, Spirit. I'm going gonna, gonna to put it on my Christmas list and order it up. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll. Hopefully I'll be able to get that one soon. So, but oh, yeah, cool! You'll enjoy that one. Oh, thank you. Books, books, books. It is. Um, I don't know. There's a. Uh, uh, there is something really I think wonderful about the you know, 
tangible. You know what I mean? The sort of physical quality of them you have in book. Even though like digitally we can, you know, have so much more, pack so much more information into like a digital book. But, you know, old printed books are nice too. So I like analog books. Yeah. Yeah. Turning pages is something, you know. There's something about the smell of an old book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, well, I just uh thank you for thank you for checking that out. Um I uh I'm hoping that we can do some drawing today. Are you all are you all ready for drawing? I'm ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's see here. I'm really getting a lot out of these, uh, just drawing the, 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 um, the constructive anatomy book. Like, I really like the way he kind of like breaks down a lot of the, like, like he put, he just put two squares together and then like we made a, a, a hand and a wrist with fingers with the same like this let me show you oh yeah Let's see drawings if you have, anybody has drawings to share I'd love to see it like this one oh, man those are looking so good spirit uh -huh. oh thanks dude yeah and then there's like i don't know if you can see it but like bones and yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's just kind of basic <laughs> Yeah, but I drew a lot. Oh my god. They look great. Thank you. Wait a minute. What was that little what was that little potted plant? Oh, that was just kind of a little doodle I was doing. I was just kind of like learning um uh, like like shadow, you know. Uh-huh. Cast shadow and drop shadow. That was before I started doing the anatomy. That was already on the um on the book. Well, um, no, I think that's uh, that's going to be like that next step. You know what I mean? Is like you take the you know um, you take all of this constructive approaches. You know what I mean that we're doing, and then you apply you know value to them, and it's uh, color color lays on top of that. We mm -hmm. haven't really talked about color, right? But like, but like you know. Like tonal value, you know, that's the most important thing. And then color really sort of uh, is, a, is another step further, but it's just a, really an extension of tonal value in this way, mm -hmm. right? Because it's all about light, because that's how we see, you know, that's what color is about is, you know, is light. Um, so again, it, like in the beginning of the Bridgman book, he talks about like, you know, how the eye sort of perceives a line and then a plane and then a, a form right um but like conceptually we kind of we actually we actually perceive it in a different way we form and then we think see planes and then we see line so when we construct it we have to start somewhere like a, there's a point and then make a line and so on and so forth but um mm -hmm. uh but yeah no i love those spirit those were those are tremendous and Thank you. um i mean i'm i guess i'm just so excited you know what I mean? Like to, I'm all to see like like what you've done over the week. You work you work really hard on it, and it kind of like it spurs me to want to make sure that I that I did a couple as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'll show here. I'll show what the one I did a couple. I didn't do as many cool. as as you did, but I'll show I'll show mine real quick. So here's the. Here's the ones I did. I went back and started working oh, on. Oh, you looked at the stuff. Oh, that's um, cool. But I I drew them bigger, and then you know, and then sized them down to fit on the page, which was nice. You know, digitally you can do that. Mm. Yeah, no, that's so cool that you could do that. Oh, that looks nice. Thank you, thank you. Um, but I think that like, I was I was really trying to think about like what is the you know what is the point of our practice? What is it that we're ultimately trying to get to? Um, and I think it's like, you know, it's developing your own hand, really. That's really what we want to do, you know. Mm -hmm. It's um, 
I mean, being able to copy stuff is, um, is a great skill, you know, yeah. like it's a, it's a, it's a great skill to have, but I think, um, a, a big part of what we, what we ultimately want to you know, get to I, even, I guess even copying things in a certain degree would be, you'd want your own hand. <laughs> you'd want yeah, yourself because, to like, <laughs> the copying. You and, know? But the thing is, and, and you're right, like, you know, um, like if, if, if you give, you know, a piece for one person a copy and then a piece for another person a copy, they're depending on their art skills, one is just probably going to be more, one is going to have more information than the other. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, while, while it's easy to kind of say, oh, I'm just copying, oh, I'm, I'm not really doing it. Well, no, that's actually true. That's actually not true. You're really actually learning, you know, what makes this shape that shape, you know, what makes this look like this, as opposed to just somebody just looking at it and recreating it. It's like mm -hmm. now, because I know these two squares can make a hand, now, when I make a hand, I can I can remember these ideas that will help me construct it better. So, yeah, I think copying is is is, is great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there's, there's learning how to construct it, and there's learning about yourself too. I'm finding that um, I like to put things inside little boxes to make sure <laughs> I want all these things just to fit just right. And um, I didn't realize that about myself. And I'm finding other little things. I like things, continuity too. I like them to just flow. And uh, I didn't realize that. It's like, how, how is that going to fit into learning to be an artist? How, how am I gonna express that so that I'm not fighting against my natural inc inclinations? to actually mm -hmm. put something on the paper because I can't make my hand do what doesn't want it to. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. And just and teach your hand. It's like your brain knows what it wants to do, but the, the you tech, you know, muscle memory in your hand. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I can't play video games anymore. Tattooing has ruined that for me. I don't have the same muscle memory I used to. Oh wow, that's so funny. I think I'm finding this the same issue as you, Amber. Well, we don't we we don't have time for video games anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Time. <laughs> right. I'm trying to get my holiday cards done. I've been painting oh, all. Yeah. These. No, I, I like I like to do that. Also, it sounds like a. Sounds like you know, um, yeah, might might save might save some money, I guess, but also um, it might be like really appreciated, you know. So you know, you make a you make something for somebody, you draw them a picture, you, you know, that, mm -hmm. that could be really like nice, you know. what I mean, like I love I love art, I love getting art from people and like you know actual actual things. So I think there's um, I don't know, there's a get over your own, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, like inhibitions about it and do it, you know, that's, I'm, I'm talking to myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I understand. But, <laughs> you know, yeah, just do the work. Yeah. Amen. Especially, especially meaningful for people who don't, you know, like when you're older, so that you don't need a lot of stuff. You got everything for the kitchen and the house and, you don't need anything else, but that's something that you treasure. Mm. Art. Wow. That's well put. Really well put. Um, I, uh, yeah, no, I'm like, I'm really excited to, to get on to the drawing today. So why don't, I'm going to share my screen. We'll, we'll do some, we'll do some gesture sketches. And I think too, like, you know, so if you've been, you've been working through the book, it's sort of seeing those that confident line, you know, that in the Bridgman book, like that that he does. Of, of course, there's a there's a you know this maybe some light construction and stuff that you do, but there's also this sort of confidence of like a, a bold line. That's what I'm going to try to go for. Is trying to find that line that starts to, you know, give the contour of the of the form, right? Um, because it's like. A, it's so easy to get lost in the in the details 
if you know what I mean, right? Yes. That's part of my problem. I see details and it takes my brain a while <laughs> to simplify it so I can draw the gesture. Me too. Yeah, me too. So yeah, it's a, it, I think it's, um, that's a good thing to keep in mind as we're practicing through this. Like, what is it we're trying to practice? And that might be something that can be, um, uh, start to set that as a goal, you know, start to set that as something that's going to be useful, you know, for what we're doing. Because, you know, um, there's that whole idea, 10,000 hours of practice or something, and that you end up, like, mastering something. And that's probably, like, only half true, right? <laughs> like, you could do something for 10,000 hours and still suck because, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you didn't like and do, you know, there's no attention behind it. There wasn't any sort of, uh, you know, trying to grow, receiving feedback, all this, all the, all the things that you got to do, right? So, um, uh, you know, um, I think there's, let's, why don't we, uh, why don't we get, get to it here? Yeah. I do have a question. Um, yeah. How do you think that drawing the human form uh, helps with one's overall artistic abilities? Well, um, because we're not drawing, you know, like other things like landscapes, you mm -hmm. know, other objects and things like that. And, and um, I noticed we mainly focus on the human body and that's fantastic. I mean, I, that's exactly what I need, but I, I'm just kind of curious as to, you know, um, the process. Yeah. Well, so, um, there's, uh, there's other episodes, there's other content that I made in this series where I talk about how to, how to work with the, with the basic forms, the platonic solids as they're referred to. Mm -hmm. Um, so the cube, the cone, the sphere, the cylinder, all of those things, um, we can, we can sort of see them, you know, in, in throughout nature. Mm -hmm. Um, but the way that, uh, when I, you know, so going, going through, you know, going through art school and stuff like that, the way that, you know, was always sort of justified drawing the human figure so much is that it's the most complicated thing. Mm. It's the most complicated thing that you can draw. It's, you know, it's, it's sort of this, it's this solidness that is also dynamic, right? It's like, it's always in motion, even when it's standing still. Um, there's this sort of, uh, sort of balanced asymmetry, right? It's like, it's not pure symmetry, but there's a symmetry to it, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's always perspective involved. There's always value that's involved. So there's so many, um, there's so many of the skills that you, you know, you have to pour into it to, to try to, to try to like capture and re represent the figure mm -hmm. that, that like going through that process um, gives you insight into whatever else it is you might want to draw. Whether, you know, like we were talking about Art Nouveau, which a lot of times can be almost like, you know, say decorative, but, you know, like, pattern-based sort of rhythmic patterns and, and these sorts of things um to all of the other sorts of art you know the you know the the history of let's just say you know for western art what i just sort of showed earlier um and plus it's really interesting you know what i mean there's that too it's like we're as as human beings we're we're really interested in the other so when we see other bodies we see eyes we see you know the pattern of a figure um we're instantly sort of uh there's a transfix you know we get transfixed on it in certain ways so um so yeah i i think that um you know at a certain point we probably should you know start doing maybe some other sorts of themes and stuff um but i i'm yeah like like you said you really enjoy it i really enjoy it too sort of working with the body right now and, uh, you know, um, but, you know, of course, I think, you know, I think you're absolutely right. We need to, we need to um, include other subjects as well, you know, so that way there's a, some balance, you know, to what it is that we're working on. So we'll do figures, we'll do figures today. 
Um, but perhaps next I'm not. Com- I'm not complaining. I'm no. I know. Not but at I all. Wanna, <laughs> I want to take your feedback and 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 treat it, you know, with uh, like seriously. That I think there's um, what you say is true, and there's also like um, uh, there's also a need, right, to sort of do other types of subjects and things. And I love landscape. To be honest, it's something that uh, um, uh, something that I you know always feel like that you know I, I need some work on. You know, what I mean? so, um, but that's the thing, right? You you start to be able to draw objects and backgrounds. You know, it's space. Does that does that make sense? Right? Like, like that's what oh, yeah. whole, that's what a landscape is. It's like it's space. It's like you're trying to create mm-hmm. depth. And there's sort of things that sort of that are nearer to the point of view of the viewer. And then there's things that, you know, you, you want to, you want to try to show as, as far away as possible. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the sort of, that's the, that's the relationship you have. The figure is, you know, this appearance that's, there's a solidity to it and it has to be within a certain proximity to you. And then the, the depth of landscape um, and that, it's that sort of relationship that ends up mm-hmm. making these really kind of uh, um, representation, mm-hmm. Re- you know, represents uh, reality yeah. for us. So. I'll, I'll be excited to do some, some other landscape stuff too. I mean, it's, is there a call for landscape in, in tattooing? Is it hard to do landscape in tattooing? Because there's lots of, you know, a lot of people have figure type things whether it's people, yeah. or animals, or something for their tattoo, can you get a landscape tattoo? Or is sure. Oh yeah. Hard yeah. Yeah. What well, you have to your paints and things. Your how much depth can you do? And and do you have the range of colors that you need? And yes. No. I think it's, it is a really good question, and it's it's it is like. Um, there's a technical challenge that's related to it, right? But same thing, like you can you can do it in black and gray, right? Like tonal value. And if you can do it in tonal value, right, you can, again, like, so colors on top of that. Hmm. So if you start to, you know, you think about like what it would take to render space, to render a landscape. Um, I'm, I'm, I take the, I take classes with, uh, um, with the reinventing, you know, uh, uh, canon. So there's, uh, so Guy Atchison has his uh, reinventing the tattoo. The, it's a book, and um, so, and in this, in this, it's interesting you ask this. Like in this latest chapter, he, you know, he's talking about color. He's talking about like he's he's doing like a landscape tattoo. It's amazing, obviously, his Guy Atchison mm-hmm. um, landscape. But um, but again, so like, so the there's a there's a bit of like you know focus right things that are closer can be more focus things that are further away have like the less detail it's also there's atmosphere between you know like wherever wherever the you know the the viewer's eye is and the extreme background this like you know so the the general thought is like to add coolness right so you add like cooler colors less tonal value range and you can you can achieve that feeling of 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 deep depth, right? Um, even you know, like even like looking at like a, an image of of outer space, see how far away. There's all sorts of like uh, um, misconception, I suppose. Like you know, if you think about like how far away stars are from each other, they're just like little points of light. They might be you know light years away from each other, and that sort of a thing, but from a single point of view and you look, um, there is, uh, there's ways to render it, I guess is long story short. So, um, so yeah, no, I think these are all, uh, these are all like interesting um, topics that we, we ought to, we ought to tackle as a, as a crew. So um, I'm excited for it. Figure drawing, perhaps we could do, uh, perhaps we could, you know, work out a schedule where we sort of do, you know, figure drawing every other week and then on the alternative weeks we do you know maybe some sort of like a maybe we'll have like a um you know a landscape that we 
that we try to cap, you know, tackle or something like that. I'm here for it. Awesome. No, that's yep. awesome. Thank you. Thank you all for the support. I think that's great. And I, um, again, it's, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, you like, you know, in art, if you go to art school or whatever, there's like, there's specific classes. Like you just do life drawing class and you just do fundamentals class or whatever, you just do art history class. And so maybe this is more of a space where we can start to touch on all of those subjects together. You know what I mean? And start to integrate them into something that's more um, holistic. Does that make sense? Like we're starting yeah. to touch on all those things. Um, yeah. But also, you know, I love, I love it when you all bring things, you know what I mean? So, um, so I think that's, uh, well, let's, we, let's get, let's draw. What are we doing? So I'm going to, uh, let me see here. I'm going to share my screen. Let's get to draw. Oh, let's get to drawing. <laughs> we are burning daylight. Perfect. So again, so these are the 92nd, um, figure, uh, gestural figures. So three, two, one. And so, um, thinking about that, that idea of the, just the line, right? Whatever the line is that'll start to describe the, the whole, the, the plane and then describe the, the form afterwards, right? That sort of thing. Yeah, I gotta keep working on my <laughs> my lower back. It's like you um you just you don't you don't always think about yourself while you're tattooing, right? You just you know you can get into bad posture. It's important, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's not about like you know being sort of fancy or whatever. It's like you know your posture matters because you know there's health component to it so Dur morrison just did a seminar on reinventing about you know the longevity of a tattoo artist and how to take care of ourselves and our bodies yeah he was one of the reasons i actually went to one of his seminars in person and he was one of the reasons that i stopped wearing leather like hard leather belts when i'm working i just get those cloth belts now yeah you know what i mean because it's uh it's like bad on your hip back area. Yeah, it'll give you nerve damage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a chance to check out the that last seminar you were talking about, Amber. It was, um, I thought it was really great. Um, important, right? Important to know because definitely worked with some old timers and they are in bad shape, <laughs> you know. Yeah, they no, destroy their body. Well, that's the whole, you know, maybe that's the thing. The, the grumpy old tattooer is like, you know, is in a lot of pain, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that uh, right. was so bad. What do you say, Amber? I said, maybe that's why they hazed me so bad. <laughs> They're like, don't do this. I just Turn thought it was around. the cut of biker dudes. Yeah, no, in pain. Yeah. Anybody like ever run through the field like this? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> this guy. I grew up on a farm. Like... We did this a lot. <laughs> Fun. <clears throat> I think after the soccer goal, I think maybe you might have done that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the. 
it's, there's something celebratory about it, that's for sure. Or maybe childlike, I guess. So I was studying the, uh, <clears throat> some of the Dutch masters, um, like kind of like after the um, Renaissance, kind of like just like you said, like the, during the Baroque and Rococo period. And uh, I found that like one of the reasons that they were just kind of starting to depict normal people as opposed to, you know, the mythological Christ Bible characters is because the artistic market was what it was like. Before, you know, during the Renaissance, their patrons were like the church and, you know, royalty and things like that. But with the Dutch masters like Vermeer and Rembrandt and all of them, um, their their artistic market was different because they would actually be able to go and sell their pieces out at the market like like normal people. And so that's why you actually find a lot of their pieces you know, you just have like, you would just have like normal people in their pieces and it would just be the, the average man who would be illuminated in art as opposed to, you know, the biblical characters. I just kind of thought that was interesting because it's almost like it gives a first glimpse into just the people just living their normal lives. It was kind of just like the photography documented, you know, documenting the times of the people and like what they would wear and just their mannerisms and you know types of things places they would hang out and uh i just thought that was kind of interesting uh it is interesting and i think it's um it's a great observation uh it's, it's kind of funny it's like you know modernism modern modernity is a code word for capitalism and so mm. the early modern period is what you you know the Dutch masters time period and that's what it was like you just said is the market and and you know the increase in in capital so no more normal people started having um uh money to spend right um uh -huh. there was a certainly a shift in the authority right away from away from the uh the church being the, you know, as authoritative as, you know, as it was in the sort of medieval periods and the Renaissance and all, you know, throughout the, throughout the history of, um, mm -hmm. that we're speaking of. Right? So, uh, but yeah, no, I think that's, um, it's problem. I, you know, I wonder though, too, if it hasn't like really kind of shifted back and forth throughout time, right? There was probably mm -hmm. other periods of time where, um, where artisans would make just, you know, lots of normal art for the people. Um, mm -hmm. And it becomes maybe concentrated in the, uh, what I guess what art is defined as becomes concentrated in the, you know, the hands of the powerful, you know, monarchies and church and stuff. But then, you know, with this sort of shift to every day, people having some money to spend. There's some incentive for artists to start to pay attention to them. And I guess it right. can support, it can support their, you know, their, their practice. Mm -hmm. And you think maybe it was, there was some, um, well, that, you don't want to draw frivolous things, everyday things. You want your, your art should be kept to the, to the sacred, to the, mm -hmm. I think. That was, that's certainly. A waste uh, of time on things that aren't godly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Certainly, certainly what uh, certain artists said, you know, like at the beginning of the time period that Spirit was talking about. <laughs> so, because there was a, you know, there was a great, in Europe, there was a great schism, you know, the, the, the Protestant and Catholic, uh, Sort of split and so um church art that you know that we sort of a lot of times we think of you know as being sort of the beginning of european art and stuff um 
certainly like the invention of oil painting as we define it was, you know, um, was a part of that, like making the altar painting and making the, you know, the religious art of the, you know, what was, uh, what was sort of sacred and stuff. But, um, but no, I think, you know, it's like we were just talking about, like, you can find something almost sacred and, you know, beautiful and have a spiritual sort of relation to, to everyday stuff. Yeah, and that's kind of what, how they were depicted as, I mean, they would even use light to kind of, you know, they would uh, study Caravaggio a lot. Like he had a huge influence on the Dutch masters. They even called him, they called him, they called themselves Caravaggists. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they were just, just like Carrie was saying, I mean, they would, they would use light to kind of like, create them make themselves holy figures just like the normal you know housemaid pouring some milk you know what i mean mm -hmm. but they just would use light to um you know just really um make it kind of a holy experience you know just the human being living and just doing his normal thing is almost the godly you know the godliness the godly nature existence <clears throat> right it's you know it's like you said all those approaches had been developed to to be affective and so you know it's sort of like a there was a you know a bit of a risk i think like you, you know taking it and taking it away from the from a religious icon and putting it into sort of an everyday kind of almost profane kind of context uh but um, and that's probably the definition of, you know, kitsch almost, but that's the whole thing with kitsch, right? It's, it's not that it's, you know, it's not that it's stupid. It's that it's, it's incredibly affective mm. um, and, it, and it's profound. Um, that's the, that's probably the sort of, why some people mistrust it, you know? Mm. Kind of helps me. Kind of helps me get through my everyday life. Sometimes, you know, just mm -hmm. finding the profound within the normal, and just using that to say, "Yeah, man, this this matters. This is important." Absolutely. Because you know how the older you get, it's almost like you you, you struggle to find meaning in things. That's when you need little ones around. Amen. Yeah, they remind you that everything's full of wonder. Mm, I love it. Man, 90 seconds go so fast. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. Well, I'm finding, you know, I'm just sort of going for it and I'm like drawing, I'm falling off the page with the figure, but I think that's important to remember, right? Let that happen. Let the, let that figure fall off the page rather than squeeze it in. That's always going to be, because, you know, also um, something that I, I might suggest too is you can always sort of focus on an area, right? Rather than trying to get the whole figure, you could always sort of focus on, say, the you know, the head and shoulders or something or an arm, just work on that part if you want with one of these, because I think, um, uh, like a lot of cropping it in, you know, can be, um, can mm -hmm. still be really like aesthetically pleasing, can still sort of be, uh, valuable. Um, cause we don't always include the whole figure in a composition. You might mm -hmm. end up sort of really wanting to have that capacity to to crop in and to look a little closer so that might be something that could be might be something that could be really useful well i found uh um there's a drawing group here in the uh, in the city 
that needs a couple. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna join up. Um, I'm gonna make the time for it. Um, and so I hope I hope you all can find drawing groups and stuff too. Where, um, they get together. They have a they have a figure model. It's really something I'd love to do at you know with my my colleagues. My uh, that I tattoo with to have uh, you know have everybody get together for art night and um, that would be model. cool. I think it'd be, Definitely, it'd be really. I don't know. Good, like it's good for everybody. It's good, you know. There's a team building aspect to it, community, <laughs> and, uh, um, for all the reasons like that we talk about. But two, this is fun, you know, drawing the drawing these uh, models, these um, computerized models, but really like drawing from life is, uh, yeah, you know, it's different. It is different than this. So I think, um, I think I would encourage, certainly encourage anyone to sort of check into it. It's um, something really wonderful about it as a, as an activity, as a practice. It can be hard to do when you're work, busy working and stuff, family, all that stuff. Really challenging. That's it. We did it. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, um, Let's check them out. I think that would we, we should we should take a minute and check them out. See what's um, see what everybody's got going on. So who wants to, who wants to share theirs? Any takers? Well, rather than use ten separate pieces of paper, I folded mine into quarters. So cool. I've got like and each. Uh, they're very light because I'm not real confident yet. Those four and then pull it back a little bit away. Pull it towards you just a little bit. Sorry, no, go by. <laughs> just like your uh your um uh zoom screen keeps like blurring them out. Oh yeah, you have blurry background. background on. Here's the kind of see them. The last two. Okay. There, we can see those. There you go. I think, yeah, when you hold it at a little bit of an angle, like back, maybe like tip it back towards you a little bit. There, yep. Yeah. Now I can see it. Mm -hmm. okay. Nice. And it looks like you were sort of letting the, letting the figure fall off the page. Oh, yeah. or the in there. Yeah, um, a quarter of a page is not, you can't get the whole thing in there, but even, I can see how they were standing at least. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, um, those are difficult. No, I think that was, I think that there's a nice confidence to the line, which is like, that, that's always pleasing to see. Um, but again, I, I I really I really thought that your um, your head study you did from the book was, was tremendous, really tremendous. So um, so great work on that. Keep it up. I you know that's all that's all we can do is keep it up, keep at it because um, um, and then this right feedback and, and sort of you know talking about them. So um, yeah, it's so cool. I mean, it really is. It's really just cool to see and um, see the progress. So, yeah, I, I'm happy. I'm happy awesome. with it. Uh, yeah, awesome. awesome. I couldn't have done that a while ago. So. Yeah. And enjoyment too. That's a big part of it. So, mm -hmm. all right. Who who else? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get it over with because these got away from me today. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, so good. Seriously, they're getting better and better. Um, nice. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Not too much in the detail. Not too much yeah. loss in detail. You're getting. I've better been. The... I'm getting better at just rendering the edges and not focusing on the details so much. Right. Training yourself to see, you know, like I wanted. I want to do this, right? Yeah. Training yourself to sort of to recognize that I, you know, 
it's, that's stuff we all got to work on, you know, myself included. So I'm um, anyway, yeah, just, you know, not, not too much on the details. Didn't seem like there was any messing around. You were really sort of finding those edges and that's the, yeah. that was what you set out to do. So I think there's a real success in that. So and I'm trying to get a little quicker. Cool. Yeah. Outstanding. So that's, uh, you know, um, I think too, just, just doing it like regularly, that's going to be, it's going to just, it's going to add so much to it, especially like, you know, you want to do the filigree, you know what I mean? That you were talking about maybe doing on your, um, on your, your, your watercolor painting that you showed earlier. Yeah. Like working through this sort of, we're talking about the human body, like there's all of this motion and there's all of this sort of flow that happens in the body. So the more of that we do, then it sort of, it, Starts to permeate yeah. the way that we would do. I'm pretty slow training. at filigree too. It would sort of, yeah, maybe like sort of in, in informs how you might approach that sort of a thing. You know, the yes, proportions definitely. you end up using, the movements that you sort of that you end up having. Um, we all, we all, I think we always end up relating it to to bodies and, and nature and stuff anyway. So, and the marks I make on paper are becoming more confident. I I think so. Mm, that's what's up. I like yeah. that. Spirit. Hey, uh, let's see. So I just I just scrunched everything into one layer here. Uh oh, no. There we go. Awesome. How do you do that in seconds? Oh my goodness. Well, I think that that the figure that's twisting um, on the top is oh, this uh, one? yeah. Is, yeah, that's that's really really good. it's very, it's really dynamic, and it has a um, just has a great flow and movement. So, oh, wow. uh, really able to capture the um, the dynamic quality, right? Just the the movement. Again, a sort of solid form of the body, but it's always it's always in motion. You know, it's always mm -hmm. we're always moving, right? So it's. Uh, I'm finding that um, doing this is really helping with like my perspective of, you know, because I I'm sure these, the legs and these arms aren't perfectly rendered as far as the length and stuff, but they look, it, it looks right. You know what I mean? For, for looking at it, it looks kind of correct. And, you know, just kind of being able to look at everything and then kind of drawing it correctly. Um, <laughs> I think that I, I think it's really helping me with uh, you know with uh, with everything. Just just these exercises, just helping me with my perspective of the length of the limbs and the, the size of the head and things like that. Yeah, well, I think you know too. There's a, there's a lot of movement you're capturing, and it's sort of like it's the you know you're you're looking at the whole thing, and you're 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 taking the you know limbs and the torso in context with each other and the head and so um like the the accuracy will will develop you know but like but sort of training like you know like we're talking about like just sort of training yourself to see the things that you that you want to to go for you know to sort of to you're at, we're abstracting these things right they're all mm -hmm. like way too much information for us to draw in in the amount of time way too much we can't draw all of it so we have to abstract it and like simplify it and you know get something else out of it and that's uh that's what you're doing we're all doing it and so um i think through the practice of you know continuously sort of training ourselves to to keep seeing um essentially what we're doing we're training to 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 see like how do how do we see um it's gonna uh it just everything develops from there right all your uh, all of the accuracy and then you know and next again like the, the tone and the color and stuff like that you're you know too much information to put all the color in anything right mm -hmm. so you have to again sort of take the same kind of i think um mindset of i'm gonna i'm gonna abstract this i'm gonna make it simplified in some way and that's how i'm gonna achieve you know the representation, something that starts to represent, you know, the thing that I'm that I'm trying to, to capture. 
anyway, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I love it. I think that's great. And then, of course, and the confidence too is uh, um, it's so it's so aesthetically pleasing, right? It's just so it's so you can feel it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You just sort yeah, of feel it when it. you see when you see art. Totally. So I have uh, I have a couple. I'll just sort of I'll try to scroll through them. I don't know if I can. It was the last one. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. Thank you. Oh, here one, you know, cropped in. I was talking about cropping in. Just sort of drawing like a, just a just a portion. Mm. Um, uh, I'll try to. It was the standing, the standing one. Oh, wow. Maybe that was, a little that bit. That was a hard one. It, yeah. was, it was hard. Um, might be a little bit narrow, I think, probably at the. Legs might be a little bit short on mine. And probably just a little bit stronger. That would be nice too, like right at the feet. Right? Put a put a little bit stronger line. Yeah. A stronger line at the feet, probably stronger line um on one edge of the of the the thigh that's in front. I think that would help. And you know, maybe just like just be just more decisive, like right at the face. Like I'm, you know, it's not time probably to draw the features of the face. I don't know why I got so bright, silly. Um, but like, just be more decisive and uh, less, you know, less messing around with it. Let's see, ah. this one, I, I like, I like this one. I thought it turned out okay. Here. Yeah, the kneeling, yeah, sort of somewhat kneeling. It's interesting. <laughs> nobody's, none of these figures are ever like on something. You know what I mean? They're always like, yeah. oh, God, I think I can do. No, ah, I can do this. <sighs> Jesus, technology, it's got to be. Um, yeah, that'll help. Turn down the background a little bit. So yeah. There we go. It's getting brighter. Oh, oh. God. Anyway, yeah, that guy. So, um, yeah, just a few, you know, my notes for myself probably, I got to practice more every day. Just every day. Do this every day. Like, it's, it's, uh, um, it's great to do this every week. So at least I'm doing it that, you know, at least I'm doing it that much. But, but I'm finding, like, I'm getting more satisfaction, getting more out of this practice. I do it every day. You know what I mean? Sketch every day, draw every day, um, read every day, you know, do all of that stuff. Um, Cause otherwise it's like, you know, it's so easy to let it just sort of go. It's so easy to let it fall by the wayside. And then you go, you go a week, you go two weeks, you go months, you haven't drawn it all. You know, you just like maybe, maybe you, maybe you're, maybe you're a tattoo artist or something, and you have to draw a little bit all the time. But you're not ever drawing for yourself. You're not ever enriching. It's just like I'm only drawing for my work, and it's like mm -hmm. I went ten years only drawing for work, and it killed my talent. Not well, not my talent, but my skill. Mm. Of the talent I had, I just have to rehone it. I can totally relate to. Uh, oh my gosh yeah I, I could definitely relate to that you know just just being able to sit down and just draw something like be like oh my god I can't like I would think I couldn't draw you know what I'm saying I for, can't for my hand do the thing yes yes exactly exactly but I can tattoo pretty pictures on people you know what I mean what the heck is that mm -hmm. again it's a, a it's a valuable skill um but there's something that uh, it doesn't, it's not everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? right. It's not all of it. It's not the whole, it's not the whole picture. So, um, you know, taking time for yourself, and, you know, it's, it's how you care about yourself, you know, and then and ultimately it's how you end up sort of caring for other people too, especially when we're doing this sort of work. Um, or even if you're an artist, that's, you know, you're, you're, you're drawing, you're drawing, drawings or painting paintings or whatever right like there's got to be other stuff you're doing there's other ways that you're feeding your visual library you're problem solving you're, you know you're doing these things that are um that are stimulating 
and yeah. and that's yeah. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> no, it's true though. You're right. <laughs> I like don't let, you know do as I say, not as I do. It's tough. I, that's the thing. I'll admit it. It's very challenging. I think to keep up with all of it. You know what I mean? And to find, I always find it like you have to put value onto this stuff. You know what I mean? You have to value it enough to do it, even though it's like mm -hmm. you don't get paid. You know what I mean? Like you don't get paid for right. this. Right. Like. And it doesn't make sense to everybody else. Like we could be playing video games right now. <laughs> it might be, you know, it might be much more exciting. You know what I mean? But um, I don't know. It's pretty exciting doing these, doing these quick sketches. I think when you really think really really commit to it and do it, I think it's pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah, this is different from video games because this is actually fulfilling. Like you know, like video games are great. You know what I mean? But you don't have anything at the end. But I mean, you're absolutely right. It's like you know. I could be doing something that's giving gives me dopamine, but this is actually providing me serotonin. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well put. Um, so, well, anyway, I think you know throughout this week, um, again, I'll probably point at the the Bridgman book if you all have a chance. Try to sketch from that. Maybe I think, right um, you know. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you, there is uh, there's Thanksgiving holiday uh, in the States. I think in Canada, it's like it's at a different time. Is that Boxing Day? Or is that I don't, remember, I don't know much about Canada, but I, I think they have different different things. Yeah, they have a Thanksgiving type holiday, but I, I think it's, in, you know, it's different. Different time. Yeah. 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 Certainly different. So, yeah, in the States, we've got Thanksgiving. So um and black friday oh my goodness oh yeah yeah black friday i'm doing yeah. friendsgiving on black friday nice because we're going oh, yeah. to a friend's house for thanksgiving so on friday because i still want to invite everybody over to my house we're doing it all over again and i'm cooking oh yeah no oh, that's great well you know it's always uh um so something that i that i've uh uh I've always done, you know, for la you know, for the last, I don't know, 15 years or something like that, that is, uh, you know, if I'm on the bus, right, or if I'm at the library, you know, wherever I'm at, if there's people there and they're doing stuff, right, especially it's, it's better if they don't know, but they're yeah. busy doing things, you sketch their picture. They're kind of like posing for you. You know what I mean? They just yeah. don't know it. They're absorbed in their activity, right? So get out your sketchbook and then you sketch their picture and stuff. Um, I think this is a, this is, it's a fun thing to do. And it's, you know, it's also sort of a, you know, you practice like not being a creep. Like, <laughs> like can you get uh, a draw on their picture and stare at them without like being a creep? It's um, so there's a fine balance that you end up, you, you, you learn to strike it. Um, but, uh, but again, it might be sort of something fun and interesting to do if you've got, um, you've got uh, loved ones around or you're around family or other people uh, in the next, uh, you know, during this time of the year, um, you know, they're going to be doing stuff. Maybe they're like, maybe they're dozing off too much Turkey. I was about to say, I'll switch game. my dad on the couch after. <laughs> you have a perfect <laughs> subject to, to capture, you know what I mean? You can, uh. <laughs> you can draw their picture. And so that might be something that's interesting to do. Um, but yeah, so, Draw some Bridgman if you get a chance to this week. And then next week, um, we'll go through and we'll like, we'll practice a few like sort of forms. And then maybe like, uh, maybe we'll talk again about like tonal value and then a little bit more about like perspective and stuff. So that way we're kind of like mixing it up a little bit. Um, and, you know, again, we'll try to start a, try to start a more rigorous kind of approach where we're doing different things on different weeks. And then also, um, but just continuing with the figure, right? Always the figure going on yeah. and then other stuff too. So that way it's, um, keep it interesting. Right. But then also there's just more that we're, again, we talk about that visual library, just feeding our visual library with, with more and more. Um, and that'll be, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll keep it interesting. Keep you coming back. So, cool. um, thank you all so much 
for joining me today. And, and uh, you know, I hope hope those of you who are, are watching or will watch this that you uh, like and subscribe. And then, of course, um, you know, that you that you join, you know, you join along. Right. That's that's really what this is best for. Right. Is is to participate with us or, you know, be involved in your own drawing activity and just sort of know that, you know, we're we're all together, you know, in spirit. So um, why don't we uh, why don't we do some quick sign offs and then we'll we'll get we'll get to it. Right. We'll get to our get to our busy days. Right. So. Um, Harry, we start with you. Oh, okay. I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and I'll see you on Tuesday or Monday. Monday. Yes. yes. Monday. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amber. I'm Amber Morgan, and I'm located in Mays Landing, New Jersey. As always, thank you so much for doing this class. I get so much out of it, and it has made Mondays a much better day. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you, Amber. Really appreciate. You can it. find me on all platforms under Amber Morgan. I even have a TikTok now. Cool. Nice. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, like, um, you think TikTok is gonna? Um, <laughs> you think that uh, will that TikTok will be around for a long time, or you think that you think that it's gonna get shut down? Not. We will get um, I feel like it's a, it's just a fad. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay. My daughter made me get a TikTok. She's like, you have to have a TikTok to advertise your nails and your tattoos. You have to. Sure. So she manages my TikTok. That's no, it's cool. I was like, I don't have time for another social platform. The kids love oh, the right. TikTok. And the kids they do. It. They do. <laughs> I guess they don't, you know, like I've heard like they don't <laughs> even they don't even go to Google anymore. They just do the TikTok is their search engine. Oh, oh wow. wow. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's too um, it's too much excitement for me. But I don't know. It's yeah, too TikTok, TikTok is crazy. We'll see. We'll see how. We'll see what happens. Right. Be be fascinating to find out what happens next. So, spirit. Hey guys. Um. Uh. You can find me on all platforms. Tattoos by Spirit on Instagram. Tattoos by Spirit on TikTok. And tattoos by Spirit .com. Again, I really appreciate you, uh, James, for having us. This is really wonderful. Um. I remember when I first started, I was just like, Oh man, I really hope this class helps out, and I really hope it's going somewhere. Let me tell you, it is, and I can definitely see the results and my work and just in my everyday temperament. So I appreciate you guys uh, for always showing up and showing out. And uh, and those watching, please feel free to join us. Remember to press that like button, like and comment on everything that is that we do so we can know we're doing the right thing. Thank you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Too. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you all so much for your, for your support. Um, it means the world to me. Uh, this really is, uh, you know, again, like um, labor of love, but it's also, I think, uh, um, I'm getting a lot from it personally. So um, it's, uh, it is so gratifying to hear that you all are as well. So again, thank Absolutely. you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Really, I just can't thank you enough. It, it means it, that's it's what makes it right. You know, it'd be like, uh, that's you know, what's that? Oh, okay. Well, I also, um, I also want to like wish everybody, uh, you know, a great, great Thanksgiving. Um, I'm James Wisdom. You can find me on Instagram at Tattoo and Wisdom and my website tattooandwisdom.com. Um, you know, as always, uh, thank you again for coming to Drawing for Tattooers. Uh, happy drawing.